Hi guys and welcome back. We need to talk about Bitcoin because we saw a massive drop yesterday as I explained in my live stream. But what is the actual reason behind this drop and can it get still worse for Bitcoin and the whole crypto market? And I can give you already a small hint. The reason why we were dropping came out of China. If you want to know what I'm talking about, then definitely make sure that you stick around here and subscribe to the channel, like this video and also activate the bell so that you will never miss out on these important updates. And now let's directly get into it. The first reason why we were dropping, so the actual reason why we were dropping, and then there was a trigger. The reason why we were dropping that insanely to the downside was the open interest in the futures market. Because the open interest was insanely high and was climbing here since March. We were climbing in open interest. So the open interest yesterday was $14.06 billion in open interest that we had. Uh, there, there I have it. So, and when the open interest is high, that means a lot of people are participating in the futures market, that it can always happen that one of these, these sides gets squeezed. So that means the long side or the short side can get squeezed. So, and here we saw now a long squeeze because a lot of people were betting on that we go to 30K and beyond, and we actually didn't. And 30K was also re a really crucial resistance that we could not get through. I explained that yesterday. And for that reason, now we had to come down to the next bigger support level from where we potentially go uh, can go and retest the higher levels. So that was basically the reason why we dropped. But the trigger, so there's potentially two triggers. One trigger was that here on Twitter was shared, not from WatchGuru, it was actually the Wall Street Journal, that Elon Musk's uh, space X were selling all their Bitcoins worth <clears throat> $373 million in 21, but they haven't sell, sold one single Bitcoin. But people were assuming when they hear write off that they were actually banking a loss and selling their Bitcoin, which was not the case. So and now for a write off, you have to understand what is a write off and did they make a loss or did they not make a loss? So a write off means that. I give you an example. You buy a house for a million dollars today. The house is worth a million dollars. In two uh, two years, we have a real estate crisis and the whole market is crashing and your house is now only worth $600,000. You have to pay tax on your house every year. So, But now what happens is you have a discrepancy between your buying price and the value or the valuation right now of your house of um, $400,000 thousand dollars in discrepancy so what can you do now with the four hundred thousand dollars that you have in a loss so if you go and sell your house you can uh, so even if you don't sell your house um, <clears throat> you can write in taxes the four hundred thousand dollars off now with a house you cannot do that uh, because you have actually to sell your house to write it off but if you run a company and it would be a rental business as an example, then, and you would make a loss with your business, then you can write that loss off the taxes. And that's basically what Tesla did. Uh, sorry, SpaceX did. So and to understand um, at what price they bought that, so that they could write it off, we have to go here a little bit deeper into Twitter and look when Elon Musk made some announcement because um, more or less around the same time when he announced that Tesla allows to buy Bitcoin, that was most likely also kind of the time where he bought with Tesla and also more or less the time where SpaceX bought because I'm pretty sure they bought around the same time. Here you can also see that uh, here in a decrypt uh, article that he said uh, Tesla owns Bitcoin, SpaceX owns Bitcoin, and he himself also owns Bitcoin besides Ethereum and Dogecoin personally. Uh, let me see what's here. Something else I want to point out out of that article. Uh, no. So and now that was between March and here July 2021. Now when we go to a chart and I put this on a weekly chart and we go then to these dates and we get a vertical line. So, uh, sorry, here, March. So, kind of like here was one announcement. 
and then here 21st July 18 20 yeah 18 is closer to 21 so that's fine so here in that time span was when Elon Musk announced that both companies have Bitcoin so that uh, in that means for me he has bought before before that time span. So he has most likely bought somewhere here in that kind of range. I can imagine that he bought somewhere here. So now when you look at the price, let me actually move that a little bit higher. When you look at the price, the price is ranging here from 28,300 yeah, 28, all the way up to like $63,000. Let's say somewhere in the middle was where they bought. They bought around $40,000. Now, Bitcoin was before yesterday that came out at $28,000. So that means per Bitcoin, they had a loss on the books of $12,000. And that is what they can write off in taxes so that they have a balanced book and don't pay taxes on something which actually is at a loss. So, and that's the only thing that they did. So it was basically just pushing some numbers in the books to get a tax advantage. That's what they did. They did not sell any Bitcoins. So, but this part of news yesterday was the trigger for that big sell-off. And then the next one that coincided with that was that here Evergrande, the biggest real estate developer in China, filed for bankruptcy. So here's somewhere the article. Yeah, but I, I guess you have seen it. So what I want to point out here is Evergrande had also Bitcoins. They had $300 million risk assets. So that is not only Bitcoin. So they had maybe $100 million in Bitcoin. They had $100 million in maybe some some um, yeah small high-risk um, stocks, options, or something like that. And then 100 million somewhere else. So, but they had 300 million in risk assets that they were selling off to get liquidity for their bankruptcy filing that they did yesterday, where they filed a chapter 15 uh, bankruptcy uh, statement in the Southern District of New York. So, now to understand um, a little bit more, so you can see here. They had already a big, big issue when you look here on the balance sheet that they, that they have. So the balance sheet is from early this year, you can say. So it's like the, la uh, the last two days of 2022. Uh, so when you look here at the balance sheet for 2022, you can see that they have here a tangible book value. There they have already minus $500 million. They have here a capitalization of minus um, almost $500 million dollars and a common stock equity also minus 500 million dollars so you see they have here a lot of negative balances on their books and when you look here then the total debt that they have is 613 million dollars so now out of all the assets that they have they had 300 million dollars to cover a little bit of the debt and that's why hence they sold some of the bitcoins so and that was with the elon musk news the trigger that led to that we were crashing as we did so and now when we look a little bit closer here into evergrade um why that was actually happening is that there is an oversupply um for housing in china maybe you have seen a lot of um ghost cities in china that they even built a disney world where nobody is going to because it's empty completely empty i saw a documentary once about that so and because it's so bad and such a big loss for um, development companies to have these developed cities with all the buildings that they are starting to demolish them basically to cut the loss because they the buildings also need to be Const, uh, constantly be uh, maintained and maintenance has to be done there uh, and then use that space for um, yeah for other developments so you can see here that article is I think from last year or the year before that uh, yeah so from last year a Chinese media reported over the weekend that authorities in uh, Hainan province a tropical resort island off the coast of southern China had ordered Evergrande to demolish 39 buildings saying that the building permits had been illegally, 
illegally obtained. So that is, of course, also a problem if you just buy, uh, if you just build <coughs> somewhere something and you don't have the license to actually build that. So, but um, usually they do that to cut a loss. So, and here you can also see here trouble Chinese real estate developer Evergrande is trying to reassure investors about the impact of an official order to demolish a few dozen buildings in China. So you see, and there were in January last year already in trouble so uh, that is something that goes around for quite a while already with the trouble that they have so and um, there was some news uh, I can't remember the last time when something about Evergrande came out also the crypto market for some weird reason reacted quite heavily to it and I think it has something to do that they potentially have a really big stake in Bitcoin that they now liquidated yesterday so and um, yeah, now we are going a little bit more uh, into what's happening with Bitcoin directly. And don't forget, guys, if you want to trade on spot, because now is one of the best opportunities out there to buy Bitcoin and other altcoins um, out there. Do that on a buy bit. You can still use here my link and take part in the in the prize pool that we potentially can win and share of eight million dollars if you use that specific link here. And of course, uh, you also still get thirty thousand um, dollars if you use my link down here. So now. When we are looking at Bitcoin, here is something that I have pointed out yesterday already, which is crucial for us uh, to come back to $28,000 and potentially even higher. And that is that we are holding this box here that we yesterday dipped into. Here on Binance, uh, we actually smashed through it, but got uh, really quickly bought back up. Uh, on Bitstamp, we just touched that and bounced back up. So across exchanges, the price is really, really um different uh, when it came to the drop on futures markets uh, we went way lower than uh, what we are seeing here so but yeah it's imperative that we keep and hold that box and preferably don't come too low back into it when we are trying to go back up of course we have to have like a v-shaped recovery or um here a double bottom pattern something like this that, that we can go up again or um, even uh, here an inverted head and shoulders, something like this that we can go back up. Something like this has, of course, to happen. So we need to form here kind of a bottom before we can mm, reverse back to the upside. We will not see one candle shooting straight back up unless there's some crazy news coming out. Uh, and otherwise, we were, we were not going to see that because the weekly charts are also not looking... Um, yeah, that juicy right now. So yeah, but anyway, we have to hold that box. That is really important so that we can go back up. So and then when we go here to this chart, you can see also something that I pointed out yesterday in the video. I said, if here the golden ratio is not holding, and I said that is a potential scenario when we come down, that we most likely go to 0 0.786. And yeah, look and behold, that is exact the level where we went here on Bitstamp and um, are bouncing from it right now. Do I like how we bounce from there? No, absolutely not. Uh, what I would rather see is that we break here that, um, that resistance up here. And if I draw here a line, you, you see why there is some resistance. So now look here at all the price action here. So here it was support, 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 resistance, and here turn again into support. Now it's again resistance. So that is a level that we need to watch, which is around $26,700 approximately. That is the level to flip for me that I flip here uh, for the immediate short term on Bitcoin bullish. Uh, otherwise, there is a potential that we will go lower to here. So if we would go lower, I show you my worst case scenario. My worst case scenario would be the 1.618, 1.65, $20,400. If we cannot reclaim over the weekend uh, $26,700, I'm telling you we will go slowly but gradually over the next three, four weeks down to this target and only from there see then a move back up. Um, yeah, if we don't get stopped on the way down at $23,000. So that is the only other level that can save us more or less um, if we are starting to move lower. So, but for now, the $26,300 
level is holding. Uh, but like I said, um, we need to move above 26,700 to get a little bit more reassurance that the bulls are stepping in and uh, want to drive the price back in direction of $30,000. Guys, that's it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Please make sure that you smash up the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and I'll see you then again tomorrow.